Tuesday morning, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Of course, my name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. I've got guests on the show this morning. I've got a female and a male. And of course, we'll try and dissect the different, well, there's a major, major pandemic in the world of sports, football precisely at this point. We'll come to that later. But of course, um, Odun Ayo Asan Ruth, welcome on the show. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And I've got Dele Oshodi Glover from the UK via Zoom. Good morning, Dele. Good morning, Dele. Yes, good morning, Wally. Good morning, viewers. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, Canopilla's new high-profile signing, Hamed Musa, is set to miss over 80% of the team's away matches as a second stanza of the Nigeria Professional Football League begins on April the 28th. The announcement of the Super Eagles captain as Pillar's new signing elicited excitement among fans of the domestic league. But our correspondents learned that the former Leicester City forward told the club's management in clear terms that it will not be available for away games. Chairman of the club, Surajo Yahaya, confirmed that although the player will be available for every home fixture, he will not be part of most of their away games. With the revelation, Musa is expected to make his debut for Pillars on May 5th, when the same Mus Mas Masugida welcome Aimba. He'll miss the team's next two games against Warrior Wolves and Plitsi United. Odwayo, let me come to you on this one. You are the one who is actually in depth in the Nigerian League, and you go to all the stadiums across Nigeria. Ahmed Musa, like we guessed before on this show, will only play home games for Canopillars. He refuses to go for away games. He says it's too dangerous. The roads are bad. And that was part of the conditions he gave them before he signed in the first place. Yeah, for me, I think this is expected in the moment. I didn't expect um, Elon Musa to be traveling by road. Like he quietly, like he said, our roads are bad. I mean, we can count numerous accidents that has happened in this season alone. I think we've had about five or six already, which has involved teams from the north, from the east as well. So I think he's only trying to be on the safer side. We don't expect Ahmed Musa with the Saliba and the Fendi Group to start to um, travel with the players in our roads. I don't hear about that he's never going to travel. You don't expect an Ahmed Musa to travel all the way from Kano to Lagos. By our road. I mean, it's not safe. It's not even safe for him as well to be kidnapped or anything. We know the country is that we know the situation we have right now in the country, so I wouldn't blame him for thought. Okay, let me come to you, Dele. Before I go to the stories I have, they're all packed full here. There's a particular group. You are a big Liverpool fan, and there's a group of fans in Liverpool called SOS, Sons of Shankly, or something like that. And they've come out to say it's a disgrace if their club the Reds get involved in this Super League saga? Um, Wale, uh, good morning. Good morning once again. Good morning, viewers. Uh, Dele's personal opinion, Dele, as a Liverpool supporter, I am highly disappointed this morning. I've read captions like 1892 to 2021, rip the pop, uh, rip Liverpool, it's sad that um, some billionaires from across the globe think uh, they can just put money together and take away what brings circle, what brings joy to people away from them just because they want to make more money for their pockets. Um, before I go into details as regards all this um, Super League 12 thingy, um, it's sad that um, Liverpool was put on the front burner yesterday because Liverpool was the only club amongst those 12 clubs that played yesterday. So um, I guess they were thrown under the bus, most especially the coach, Jürgen Klopp. Um, Jürgen Klopp said in 2019, as far back as 2019, that he wasn't interested in this Super League. And that um, he as a child, him as a professional footballer, and him as a coach has always wanted to play and coach in the UEFA Champions League. So it sees no essence or the reason why uh super league should be involved so obviously the fans will revolt against it and this has been dubbed as a nuclear war um in case you don't know the whole world frowns against this it's just some very greedy people who are more concerned about this super league okay Dilly, i'll come to you on this one i'll come to doing first of all let me if i come to both of you um 
UEFA president Alexander Seferin described the European Super League as a spit in the face for football fans. Now, 12 teams, including the Premier League's Big Six, formed the Breakaway League on Sunday. And Seferin reiterated that all players in the league will be banned from national team games. The Slovenian spoke about how UEFA redistributes wealth back into the game and insists the new ESL won't as it is run by a greedy select few. Uh, Wally, I think um, just um, banning these players from various tournaments is not enough penalty for them. I think stiffer sanctions should be imposed on these teams and these players. Um, it's not in their place to determine where they play and where they don't play. I'd have uh, made reference to something that happened in our Nigerian basketball scene a while ago, but I'll let Sleeping Dogs lie. I'm very sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Because those players and those teams decided to play in that tournament, so were banned from the main tournament. You understand what I'm saying? But I'll leave that. Um, um, Wale, it's, um, it hurts that football is a traditional game. Football started in England in the 1880s or thereabouts. And then some people who managed to make money over the last few years, say 15, 20 years, think they can buy off everything and everyone, and we have to accept it Hook, line, and sinker. It's, it's, it Dele, hurts. Dele, I, I'll come to you on that. You are speaking very passionately as a football fan. Odwani, let me come to you on this one. The people who sponsored this, it is Super League, are a financial institution called JP Morgan. And they say, listen, post-pandemic, most um, organizations are counting their losses. And we're trying to make money. And if a Super League will bring us money and actually augment all the money we've lost during the pandemic... Why not? These clubs are big brands and they make money for us like yesterday. Why not sponsor it? We're only in the business to make money. What's our own? Well, we all know uh, money is the name of the game. Uh, but, but like I'm doing it like you said, football is, is like an institution all over the world. You expect the fans to come with their different views and opinions. In as much as there are so many fans that exist, yes, there are also few of them that are also for this group. For me, speaking as a fan right now, I don't see anything wrong with this. This is an avenue, it's an avenue to make more money for the team. I mean, these are people actually the investors that are coming into the game, bringing a whole lot of money, a better money and uh, an higher pay that the UFI couldn't, uh, couldn't offer. Or probably they are making more. You know, this this way see the UFI are making more, much more from them than giving back to them. So they feel this is an avenue to make more money. So speaking as a fan right now, I'm on the other side, of the fans, I don't really see anything wrong in it. And I really don't know why the fans, I, I, I get what they're trying to do. Like, football is not, it's not like Messi to do, right? So, right so, but I think Messi to do and um, Bakari Saina, the former has to have the same that. They said this is not the football they agree with. But since things change, it's still the boys. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Speaking as a fan right now, for me, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Quickly, so we'll go to, quickly money we'll, is involved. Okay, I'll come to you now, um, Odo Ayandili. Um, quickly, we'll go to um, Alexander Seferin, who calls it a spit in the face. When we come back, we'll go to a lawyer who says he doesn't think he would represent UEFA. Instead, he would represent a Super League if he had his way. With the unanimous support of European Club Association, ECA, we consulted wildly across the game. Teams will always qualify and compete in our competitions on merit, not a closed shop run by a greedy select few. That was our decision from the beginning. And any club and its fans should still have the dream of participating in the Champions League based on their results on the pitch. But before we bring you all the details, I must address the extraordinary situation that has developed on the eve of this announcement and during the night. I cannot stress more strongly at this moment, UEFA and the footballing world stand united against the disgraceful, self-serving proposal we have seen in the last 24 hours from a select few clubs in Europe that are fueled purely by greed above all else. And not only football world was uni is united, all the society is united, governments are united. It's pa part of our culture. 
We are all united ab ab against this uh, nonsense of a project. We have the English FA, Spanish Federation, Italian Federation, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, but also FIFA, all our 55 member associations, unanimous in our opposition to these cynical plans that are completely against what football should be. Our game has become the greatest sport in the world based on open competition, integrity and sporting merit. And we cannot allow and we will not allow that to change, never, ever. As previously announced by FIFA and the six confederations, the players who will play in the teams that uh, might uh, play in, uh, in, a, in the closed league will be banned on playing the World Cup and Euro. So they will not be able to represent their national teams at any matches. It would be much easier to give legal advice to the other side and for if UEFA, it's very difficult and I do not see that they have any competition law measures, especially on the point they argue it's a closed league. From my point, um, when you start a new venture, new entrant in the market, that new entrant is often allowed to have some exclusivity to protect its business. Just imagine Amazon or Google would act similarly and say, anyone who's offering goods currently on Amazon marketplaces uh, is not allowed to do that on any competing marketplace. And the outcry, I won't imagine that uh, way, but... Uh, and just compare Amazon and UEFA. UEFA is a monopolist. They have 100% market share in organizing football games, and it's different from, from Amazon. And they, Amazon has just appeared years ago, and, and UEFA has now uh, a monopolistic position since, since centuries. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, that's quite clear from my point. I think there are clear legal precedents that this, what the UEFA is threatening, is a clear abuse of a market dominant position as well as a cartel, because UEFA has some members and all the members um, work as a cartel. And you have clear precedence, as I said, in the ISO judgment of the European Court of Justice first instance, which is now challenged. But we have also a very interesting case in Germany, which is called the wrestling case, where um, the league, tr the, the federation tried to do the same thing to, to sanction players participating in that unauthorized event. We have the um, commission, not decision, but statements given in the Formula One case, which are quite clearly on that prohibition of competing events. Ordi, before I go to Dele, let me come to you first. Um, we know in the past few years, footballers have attached more money to the game than passion. It's been about money in the past than, than, than passion these days. So if you tell a footballer, play in the Super League and make so much money, but you are not allowed to play for your country. Do you think he'd care? He doesn't really care. That's just it. Uh, you know, let, let me come down to Africa. Do you think an African player playing the, in the Super League and earning over uh, above um, 500,000, do you think he really care for his country? The name of the the name of the game is money. This player, they are money so much money and we them for people. Purposes. So, and if this is coming from the super leader, I think they don't really need to mind. Okay, now, Dele, let me come to you on this one. Seferin has said it all. At a point, he said that, um, referring to Ed Woodward of Man United, he said, I didn't know we had a snake amongst us in UEFA. And uh, he's spoken very, he's called it a cynical move, he's called it a clandestine meeting by the clubs, different names he's called it. However, the bottom line is, what can UEFA do? I thought UEFA was the body that actually go, um, um, monopolizes the clubs across the world. How can a four or five clubs, based on the brand and the money they have, say, okay, good, we're not going under UEFA, we're not going under FIFA, we're going on our own. We've gotten sponsor JP Morgan on our own, want to do a Super League on our own. Is it going to work? The lawyer who spoke now said, I'd rather support the Super League than UEFA. Um, Wally, I'm going to give you a brief history as regards football. Um, first of all, let me address what the lawyer said. Obviously, the lawyer 
doesn't have the interest of football at heart. He's more concerned about making money for himself and winning the case for whoever. We put that aside. Seferin will always speak for football. You won't blame him. He's the head of UEFA who will definitely speak for football. Now, let's put that aside. These six English football clubs that are part of the supposed Super League, these clubs were built on certain traditions. These clubs were community clubs. These clubs were built by dock workers, were built by businessmen in days past, in times past. And then some rich men wake up one day and take over everything. It's unfair. Even ex-footballers who have been part of this initiative, who are analysts now, share the same opinion that, yes, we made a whole lot from this. It takes away the form. We're talking about merchandising. We're talking about ticketing. We're talking about fan base. We're talking about a whole lot of things that will be affected. Well, if the Super League thing comes to pass, the followership of football is going to drop, so to speak. People are going to turn their back on a whole lot as regards football. Football that we regard as uh, a uniting factor in the world will be forgotten in little or no time. There are people who spend thousands of pounds and dollars on merchandising alone. Pop said the other day that what's the fun in watching Real Madrid play Liverpool every other day? There was, I read some analysis somewhere that these 12 clubs are already seated, right? Leicester wasn't seeded. These people are still unhappy that Leicester City won the league about five years ago. They are still hurting from that. If Leicester happens to be one of those five teams that comes in on merit eventually, even if Leicester goes on to win the Super League, do you know that Leicester will not collect half as much as Real Madrid will collect for just taking part in the group stage of the Super League? To show you how ridiculous it is, to show you that only a certain amount of teams want to make money. And you talked about um, the pandemic having affected the pockets of certain clubs. Excuse me, these six English football clubs have not come out to say they are broke or they need financial assistance. Yes, it has affected them, but it's not that bad. Inter Milan is in crisis, financial crisis. AC Milan is in financial crisis. Real Madrid is in financial crisis. Barcelona is in financial crisis. So when Florentino Perez, who is the chairman of the supposed Super League, comes out to say that he wants to be the savior of football, my brother, we know what this is driving at. We know what this is he driving He wants at. money. I'll look at that. Okay, I'll come yeah, to that. Look. I'll come to you, Odu, now. A passionate Jürgen Klopp has urged angry fans not to blame the players nor himself for Liverpool's involvement in the Super League. The German manager, who reiterated his past statement of being against the European Super League, spoke after his side's one or Premier League draw against Leeds on Monday. Now, 12 of Europe's top football clubs announced on Sunday they were launching a breakaway Super League in the face of widespread opposition from within the game and beyond. Liverpool have won the Champions League or previous European Cup six times, with Klopp celebrating success in 2019. And he added he could not walk away from the club. The team has nothing to do with it, and the, uh, I have not really anything to do with it, but people treat us like that. The lead supporters came here today um, before the game, were shouting at us. Uh, in the city, when we had a walk this afternoon, people were shouting at us. Uh, we have nothing to do with it. So we are employees of the club. And I feel responsible for a lot of things in this club, to be honest. I feel responsible for the club as well. So, but, um, and when, when I'm involved in things, then I take the criticism easily. Um, when the boys are involved in it, they, take the, they have to take and do that as well, to take the criticism. But we are not involved in this. And so it's, it's a tough one in the moment. Uh, when you hear all uh, your pundits talking about the club and stuff like this, this club is bigger than all of us. We should not forget that. And um, this club is, is built um, in difficult times, went through difficult times and all these kind of things. So should not forget that. Um, and um, so that's just... Um, uh, for me, uh, really important important to, to mention because when people like Martin Samuel are thinking they can write um, that the club, and it means all the club, that they should, people should, or whoever should condemn us to hell. I'm not sure if that's the right saying, but he wrote that today. I saw it in the headline. I didn't read the article. And I think that's not right. And 
Gary Neville has not the right to speak um, about our anthem, for example. He can talk about the decision and stuff like this. Ordo, quickly before we go. Arsenal as a club were actually formed by soldiers who had fought in the war. Some legs amputated, some arms amputated. They all dropped a pound each from their um, regular monies they get. And actually, they formed the club Arsenal. That's why it's called the Gunners. And then you tell them they want to form a Super League now. Money from the poor and the rich will enjoy it at the end of the day. How does it work? It's a super scenario for me. Um, as we speak right now, I think that's my part of this um, discussion already. And, I, and I'm sure that they, they, they they're based on the discussion before the came to my conclusion that will be part of this Super League. You know, it, this, this Super League is to just continue to divide opinion. I, 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 I would like to go back to what um, David said earlier on. I don't think the whole thing is concluded. There's still a whole lot to be solved. The timing and everything. I don't think everything is not yet concluded. So I think different views and opinions and every other thing will still come up as time goes on. The whole thing is not in conclusion right now, but it will, it will mean a whole lot for the Gunners and the fans. As you see, okay. many of the ex players of the Astra are already against it. So it means there, there's going to be some form, some sort of decision among the fans. And this is not what this is not what we want in football because I like very rightly said. Football is a factor, and we want it to so. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Odoan Yohassan. Thank you very much. Now, dear, before we go on the show today... Will, don't you think we can have the ASO in Africa? We need money. We need money now. Hey, geopolitical <laughs> arrangements. <laughs> Thank you very much, Odoan Okay, now, dear, before you go on the show today, dear, um, leaving you with Liverpool, you're getting clopped this morning. He says the club is bigger than everybody else. And that's um, left to him, the coach and the fan and players. He's not involved in all this. It's a bored thing. But all in all, he feels it's not going to be for the best of football as far as he's concerned. Um, we all know that um, Jürgen Klopp is always outspoken, always ready to lend in a word or two as regards any issue concerning football in general. Um, like I said, it was sad that himself and the rest of the team were thrown under the bus yesterday because this announcement was made yesterday and unfortunately it was the only coach attached to any of the Super League teams that was on duty yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's why this question was thrown at him. Um, it's sad. It's very, very sad, like I said earlier, and I hope um, uh, they get to uh, compromise at the end of the day. Uh, we understand that a meeting will be held between the English FA and the 14 other teams in England that weren't invited or are not a part of the Super League. Now, if those 14 teams vote for them to stack or kick out these big six English teams, there's going to be a problem. We know that that won't happen because they need these six teams in the English Premier League. Whether we like it or not, we need the 16. We also know that UEFA are considering kicking out the likes of Real Madrid, Chelsea from the UEFA Champions League if they continue with the Super League. So, my brother, football is going to suffer if care isn't taken. Thank That's you very much opinion. for joining us this morning, Dele Oshodi Glover, all the way from the UK. Thank you very much for joining us. That's all You're we welcome. can take on the show this morning. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa on a Tuesday morning. Join us same time tomorrow, same time. Same station. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.